going on guys? Yours truly, Scott Hollywood here. Sitting out here by the boat, packing up some tackle. Uh, we're doing a trip down to Georgia this weekend, so I want to get some bass fishing in. Um, I figured while I'm out here, this is a good time for me to go ahead and make a quick video um, of what I bring when I travel. Um, now, a lot of you guys that know me personally know that I do a lot of travel for business, um, and we do a lot of travel for, for personal when we get a chance. So, and everywhere I go, I try to do a little bit of fishing while I'm in here. This is basically who we are. You know, we're all bass fishermen. We like to fish whenever we can. Um, but as you know, when you travel, you, you, know, you can't bring your whole tackle bag with you. You can't bring your whole arsenal that, that you have in your boat. Now, unless you're bringing your boat down, obviously you can bring everything you have. Uh, but when you're traveling just for uh, a weekend or if you're on a business trip, you want to go, light as, as, go as light as you can. Um, so what I've basically developed, I've been doing this now for about a year, is I kind of made up a, a little kit that I call my, my bass fishing travel kit. Um, basically, it's all designed out of this one bag here. Uh, you guys may recognize this bag. This is the bag that you get uh, from, from bass when you renew or if you join it for the first time. Great little bag that's big enough to hold a couple 360 boxes uh, and a, a little, also a little other miscellaneous stuff. But, but I basically designed my um, bass fishing travel kit out of this bag. So what I put in this bag, well I went out and bought this, uh, this Plano. Uh, it's, a, it's a two level or two tiered um, 360 size tackle box. Um, now, usually there's a, the, a lot of the baits that I keep in here, I'll just keep in here full time because this, you know, I can also use this as, as my pond box if I just want to go out and do some fishing in the ponds around here. Um, but the beauty of this is that you can take baits out of your main selection and put in and put out it as, as needed. Um, but most of the time, some of these baits I just keep in here. It's just my, my quick go-to box for, uh, for going and doing pond fishing as well. So. This box I kind of just basically use for my top water or my uh, hard baits. And I also carry uh, a little um, worm binder like this, basically for all my soft plastics. So let's dive into what we, we have in here. Now, as you know, when you're fishing, you want to cover um, all the gambits of what kind of uh, situations you're going to be dealing with. You want to have top water baits, you want to have mid diving baits, and you want to have bottom baits. So let's go quick where I got here for my top water baits. I usually bring a couple, uh, either some Zara Spooks or some, uh, you know, some walking the dog type baits here. Uh, try to keep, try to keep it simple, a shad pattern, and either a clear or, or a chartreuse pattern for bluegill. You want to just keep, you know, two. That's all you're gonna need. Same thing with your popper. You want to keep a couple poppers with you. I usually like to keep the silver and black as my my favorite to go to for popper, and then I have another shad type uh, pattern for a popper here as well. Um, also, uh, to cover your top water, you're going to want to have some uh, buzz baits. So, buzz baits, same scenario. I usually carry two with me. I carry a black one, and I carry a, a, a chartreuse one for dirty water. Most of the time, I'm going to be throwing this guy, uh, but you know, every once in a while, if you get the green, if they're finicky or whatever, you can uh, throw a chartreuse one. If the water's really dirty, you can throw that and uh, help you out there. Uh, the last thing for top water um, would be a frog. Now, the rod I bring, I don't usually carry a braid with me, but you know, if you're fishing around uh, lily pads or, or sparse cover and you want to throw a frog, this will be good for it. So, real simple, carry a black one and a white one. And sometimes I'll carry just a plain green one, kind of like what I have on this rod here, just a, a basic uh, natural color frog. Uh, but most of the time I'll just have a black and white one. I don't really do too much frog fishing when I'm traveling uh, unless I'm going down to Florida and then I'll bring a lot more frogs with me. Um, that's, basically it. that's basically it for your frogs. Um, so that pretty much covers your top water. You got your buzz bait, you got your, your walking the dog type bait, you got your poppers and you got your frogs. And every once in a while I'll bring a rapala or something like that, just like a floating minnow, but like I said, that, that very rare I'll do that. So after that you're going to have your, your mid diving baits, which are going to basically be your moving baits. Now you guys know me. Uh, all my videos out there, my number one go-to moving bait is going to be a spinner bait. So you're probably wondering why I don't have spinner baits. That's all I bring. But actually, I do bring um, quite a few other types of mini baits, and uh, you'll see them here. Um, the first one, of course, though, being a spinner bait. So you're always going to bring. You're always going to want to bring one natural shad color uh, spinner bait, whether it be a white or like this one's like a sexy shad, and one dirty water spinner bait, which would be. You know, a chartreuse green here. Sometimes I'll bring a black one if I'm going to be doing some night fishing, but again, don't do that that often. 
now, now keep in mind too um, most of the places you're gonna go most of the places I go at least at least have a Walmart um, a lot of them have a Bass Pro Shops which is another place I like to visit when I'm traveling so if I'm uh, doing some specialty fishing on, on a specific trip I'll go to the store and, and pick up some stuff that are you know specific to what I'm actually fishing the good thing about that too is that when you come back home you can add that back to your, rep your repertoire and you know build your tackle collection uh, okay, so in addition to your spinner baits, uh, another thing that's kind of like a spinner bait, which I like to throw a lot as well, is one of my chatter baits. Chatter baits, same scenario. Now, chatter baits a little different though because um, I usually bring three colors with me. I usually will bring a uh, a white one or a white chartreuse. I'll bring a green pumpkin, and I'll bring a black and blue. Those are the only three colors you need bass fish to be honest with you. White. Green, com green pumpkin, black and blue. I apologize, it's a little, getting a little windy here, so you might hear some leaves rustling around here. I apologize for that, but like I'm kind of trying to do this real quick here before we head on out, and I want to get this up so you guys can see it. Um, so that's that's your so you got your spinner baits and you got your uh, chatter baits. Next thing that I like to throw a lot is a square bill. Um, square bill is another one of those most versatile type baits that you can pretty much throw anywhere. You can throw it around wood. You can throw it around, uh, uh, you know rip wrap rocks you can throw it around uh, lily pad stems all kinds of things you can throw it around so what I like to do is the same scenario as I had before I bring three basic colors with me I'll bring a oh, pardon me here this is all timed up here I like to bring a uh, chartreuse and black back which is the most I've caught so much fish <laughs> on this particular color it, it's I can't even count I'll bring a bluegill type pattern which you know, obviously, to, to mimic the bluegill, and I'll bring a uh, I'll bring a white one or, or a sexy shad to um, to you know mimic shad in the lake or the pond wherever you're fishing at. Every once in a while, I'll bring a uh, especially in the spring, I'll bring like a fire tiger or or a crawdad pattern. I'll, I'll introduce that to my mix. But right now, it's kind of still winter time, so I'm not really going to bring those out. Um, in addition to uh, a square bill, I'm also going to bring uh, some rattle traps with me. I love throwing rattle traps, especially around grass. Uh, now this one I actually do happen to have a, a, a fire tiger in, on this one for, for this particular trip. Actually, you know, I might actually throw a fire tiger square bill in there and I think about it because it is, I'm going down to Georgia, it will be a little warmer. Um, and then the other thing is you can't go wrong with either a silver or a gold rattle trap. I think that's it for your mid baits. So I covered, so you got your spinner baits, your chatter baits, your square bills, and your rattle traps. That's all you need. Now. Sometimes you guys are thinking if it's in the winter time, I'll, I might throw a jerk bait in there. Uh, again, a jerk bait is one of those things that I don't really have good luck throwing from the bank. I don't know why. I just can't seem to get that rhythm right when I'm in a boat. So I really don't throw them that often. Every once in a while, I'll bring one. If I know it's going to be a place that doesn't have a lot of snags around or a lot of trees and stuff, I'll go ahead and, and throw one if I'm just going to be throwing out in deep water. But um, for this particular trip, I'm not bringing one. Um, so let's go ahead now. The next thing is, uh, so we've covered the top water, we've covered the mid mid level. Now we're going to cover bottom stuff. So when you think bottom fishing, the number one thing you're going to think of is a jig, right? So same thing with the jig. I'll carry usually two or three colors with me. Same as a chatterbait, I'll carry a, a black and blue jig, a, a green pumpkin jig, and usually a brown jig, which I don't actually have it here. I'm still in the process of getting it out, but but three jigs is all you're going to need: black and blue, green pumpkin, and uh, brown. That's it. The rest will be your, your soft plastic type stuff that, that you go on the bottom. So um, that's where this package comes in. So let's go over a soft plastic. Actually, before I go in there, you're probably starting to think about hooks and stuff. So what I do, I also bring uh, this little package here. This is a great little thing here for, for your um, all your terminal tackle. It's another little two-sided box. I you know you guys have probably all seen this. And basically all I keep in here, I just keep in some, some basic uh, bullet weights, some drop shot weights. I've got some, uh, some wacky rig uh, hooks, I've got some drop shot hooks, and I've got some basically Texas rig hooks. That's all you need. The other side i got uh, some, uh, some shaky head, uh, some jig heads, i got some Ned rig jig heads, bobber, bobber stoppers, and I've got a couple of other, other blank spots in here to throw some other stuff in here. Uh, if you guys want to do some uh, some beads or want to do a different type of a jig head or a swim bait or head, but like I said, this is this is all I really carry with me. N nothing nothing really uh, extravagant. It all fits in this little box and I'm good to go. Worms. 
soft plastics. I basically use this little Bass Pro Shops worm binder. Real simple. Same scenario as with all of my hard baits. You know, you, you can't go you can't go shore fishing or bank fishing without Senkos. So, I got some green pumpkin Senkos. I got some uh, dark blue, black and blue, or, or, or June bug Senkos. And I got some, usually bring some whites with me. Three colors, simple. Don't need to bring a whole lot. Like I said, if you run out, you can run to Walmart and get some more. Uh, the other thing would be your uh, your trick worms. Same scenario, green pumpkin, dark colors. Those are the two types of trick worms. That's all I ever use. That's all you need. Uh, for your jigs, I'll bring some jig trailers. Usually, same scenario. I'll bring some green pumpkin, some black and blue. Good to go. You can pretty much put that on any cover any type of jig trailer you need. But you know, I just use these are basically these Zoom Soup. Uh, uh, baby brush hogs or uh, yeah that's what these are baby brush hogs sometimes I'll mix it up depending on what I, what I feel like but right now I got a bunch of these so I just threw some in here um, also bring some Ned rigs some uh, the little the little half worms for your Ned rigs you know in a pinch you can take a, a Senko and cut it in half and use that instead but you can throw those in here as well um, and the last thing would be like your fluke type baits you know I, I just throw the flukes in with the little swim baits, I use a uh, swimming flukes or just regular flukes, and these are good for if you want to just you know put the fluke on by itself. Use it as a small little jerk bait, um, which will take the place of a of a hard jerk bait, which I talked about that I, that I'm usually bring. And I also put my swimming flukes in here for the back of my uh, for my chatter baits. So and I got some same thing, green pumpkin and some whites, and that's it. it all fits together in this little pouch, just like so. Put that in there. Uh, put this in my top bag. I put everything back in here and it goes in here. Um, now, the other things that you're going to want to bring, you're going to bring yourself a good set of cl cutters. This little clipper right here, it, it, it's, it's plain friendly. So I can put this on my carry on bag and they won't, TSA won't give me a hard time about it. Just go ahead and stick it in there. This is all I need to cut braid. I can cut any line I need. I go, that's all I need. Uh, the other thing is a good pair of scissors. <coughs> Scissors, line cutters, that's all you need. Every once in a while, I will bring some pliers. Um, actually, I gotta get another pair of, uh, of travel pliers, but, but, so a pair of pliers, a pair of scissors, and a, a pair of clippers is all you're gonna need. That's pretty much it for your tackle. Oh, also, you know what you can bring? You can bring, uh, where is it? My, my scale, I like to bring my scale, so that way I can, uh, I can uh, weigh in my fish. I don't know where my scale is, it's floating around here somewhere. Uh, there it is, right here. So, I just bring my scale. This is my little gripper that comes with the scale. That all fits in there as well. Nice little kit, we're good to go. Uh, okay, so finally, I know this video is running long, bear with me. I just kind of want to get all this out to you. Um, is my rod and reel combination. So, what I went out and bought, um, Bass Pro Shops. This is a, a Bass Pro Shops ex Extreme. Uh, three-piece medium heavy casting rod great little kit comes at its own tube like this um, I've had no problems catching fish on this rod sensitivity is great on it I mean it, it's I just usually what I usually do is I go ahead and just attach this to my backpack and uh, it's real simple I mean it comes in a little I won't take it out but it's, it's real it comes in three pieces a typical uh, it's kind of like a pro qualifier rod or, or this is actually an extreme rod but but it's great Carry that, and I also bring along with me, uh, you know, one reel. Just got uh, just, just a pro qualifier bass pro shop reel. I think I have uh, either 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon, which is pretty much a you know all purpose type line you can use for any type of fishing. Uh, top water sometimes it might be a little bit of an issue, but to be honest with you, I don't really use too much top water. I bring them, but I don't, nine out of ten times I'm not going to throw it. Uh, but again, you can run to Walmart real quick if you want and get a, 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 a you know, a, some fluorocarbon or buy some more blade or uh, braid and, and go ahead and, and spool it back up again. So that's it for my casting rod. Uh, same type of scenario for my, my spinning rod. I have a, um, actually I'm getting ready to buy a new one. This is kind of an older one, but basically just a two piece, you know, medium action, six foot six spinning rod and a reel, you know. 
uh, on your wheel you can, uh, actually this one doesn't have it, but normally what I've been switching to now is just using, using about uh, 10 to 12 pound braid with an 8 to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. You can do drop shots with that, you can do shaky heads with that, you can fish a Ned Rig, uh, you can fish a, uh, you know, a small little jerk bait. There's all kinds of things you can do with that, a fluke, a wacky rigging, pretty much everything's covered. And that, I think, is it. So there you have it. One bag, one tackle box, a small little box for your uh, terminal tackle, a little binder for all your soft plastics. So you have, you know, this is expandable, of course, so you can put more, you can put in less. And uh, a casting rod and a spinner rod. And that's all you need to go fishing wherever you go in this country, except Alaska, by the way. I was just up there, and there's no bass in Alaska. A lot of other fish come here, but that's another story. Maybe that'll be another video down the line. But, um, and that's it. That's all you need. Uh, I hope this uh, video helped you out. Uh, like I said, I apologize. I'm rambling on here. Um, but this is what I use when I'm traveling, and it's great. Uh, you get out there if only for a couple minutes or a half hour or so. Get out there and, and try to catch some fish when you're out there on traveling. Um, you'll be surprised uh, how fun it is. Well, you guys all know how fun it is because you're all fishermen watching the show. But uh, it's great. So, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you like these kind of tips, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, maybe I'll start doing a, a, a tips video. Um, I am going to be fishing uh, next year, or this, this year, uh, not out of my boat, but out of a, a George's boat, which you guys know is Bass and Sail. We're going to be fishing out of his boat for all our tournaments next year. So i got to kind of get together a quick um, co-angler setup. So I'll maybe, maybe I'll go ahead and make a video for that and how I, that's going to be hard for me to do. Wow, that's really going to be hard for me to do because when I'm tournament fishing, I like to bring everything. So that's going to be a challenge for me. I'm actually looking forward for that challenge. But, but uh, once I get that, uh, that squared away, I'll go ahead and make a video on that as well. Um, and I think that's it. So uh, like I said, uh, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. Go ahead and put some comments down there and see if you like this. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty new to this YouTube thing. As you can tell, so uh, you know, I hope to get better as we go along, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, I'm probably going to try to do some filming while I'm down in uh, uh, the Atlanta area for some fishing. So look, look out for some some of those videos coming out. Uh, I do got some more trips planned in the future. I'm going down to Tampa for a week, uh, and then I'm going to be in Atlanta again for another two more weeks. So there's going to be a lot of fishing being done over the next couple weeks, and then as soon as I get back from that, we're going full swing into, into tournament season. So. So the videos will start uh, coming out more regularly here uh, pretty, sh pretty good. Um, so like I said, uh, like and subscribe, and I think that's it. So uh, that's a wrap.